Erev Shabbos, everybody. What does the story of Malkitzedek, Melchizedek, have to do with eschatology? Let's talk about that now. I'm Yitzvah Kolakowski, Kavlan Rebbe, and uh, welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, please press the subscribe, the bell button, and like. We really appreciate that if you like the video at the end, if you deem it fit. And we welcome comments, and we often make our videos based on questions that we receive in the comments. So feel free to engage with us in that way. Uh, when it comes to the story of Malkitzedek, there's a lot of mythology that surrounds this story. Uh, that's in this week's Parsha, Parsha's Lech Lecho. And I think, in a certain way, the things that we see both in Unclus and in Rashi give us a balanced approach to this story, to this narrative. It's a true, I mean, I mean story, this historical narrative. And the reason why the Torah includes it, to what the lessons are that this, that this narrative of Malkitzedek teaches us. <clears throat> I know in a lot of other religions, there's a lot of mythology around Melchizedek, the Melchizedekian priesthood, what that means exactly, and and, and how to approach that, and what it means for in these different traditions. And I know that there are. A, uh, in classical Christian traditions, they see this as a typology of something in the future, particularly bringing out the bread and wine. But it's fascinating that Rashi, Rabbi Solomon Isaacides, in a certain way fights against that idea, even though he in a certain way supports it to a certain extent. But he separates between what I would say is the practical, the logical aspect of that story, of that action of bringing out the bread and wine, and the mythological aspect of it, and the importance of balancing between these two. And what does it mean to be a Kohen al Rossi Malkitzedek, to be a, a priest by the order of Melchizedek? What does that mean exactly? So, first of all, I think it's important to look at Unclus, which is an ancient translation of the Torah. The Targum Unclus is an ancient translation of the Torah into Aramaic. And it's worthwhile to look at this because if you do a word study comparing in Unclus this word Kohen, generally the word Kohen it's translated as a priest. And uh, I know a lot of Frum people don't like to use that term for a Kohen because they want to distinguish between a Kohen and a Komer. Komer is a, a priest of idolatry. A Kohen is generally, in Scripture, a priest of the order of Aaron, meaning a, a, a within the Jewish religion, that is what, what our Kohanim are, what our priests are. But the truth is the word Kohen sometimes also means a, what's occasionally called in, in Scripture a Komer. And at other times, the word has a totally different meaning. And that's what I really want to focus on here that it, it almost doesn't necessarily mean a priest at all, but it kind of still does. And we can talk about that. So, in general, whenever we're talking about what we would colloquially call a Kohen, or even something similar to that, but in general, a Jewish priest, we... The Unclus just simply takes the word Kohen and kind of Aramaicizes it to Kahana. So there's really no difference. It's really just the same word, just in an Aramaic sense. 